from the Dominican Republic. He went in at 133 pounds. He's 25 years of age. And his professional record reads 24-1-1 one one with 19 knockouts. He has won 19 in a row, 15 by way of knockout. And the champion, Paul Spatafora, is 24 years of age from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. First Pittsburgh title holder since Hall of Famer Fritzy Zivic in 1941. And he's 28-0 with 14 knockouts in his career. Paul Spatafora. So we are set for tonight's main event. Paul Spatafora and Victoriano Sosa. Robert Finocchi is the referee, and we take a look at the rules. The unified rules will be used in tonight's main event for this title fight. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Accidental cut, they'll go to the scorecards after four rounds are complete. Well, there was a story in the Post-Gazette, the newspaper in Pittsburgh written by Chuck Finder about Tom Yankello being with Paul Spatafora for three years and 15 fights. Jesse Reed was brought in to help prior to the Cardona fight and uh, last week Spatafora let Yankello go and Al McCauley who you saw on the ring was quoted as saying that the fighter had lost confidence in him and that Tommy had never taught Paul a damn thing. When we asked Spatafora about it he issued a no comment. Well, he doesn't want to get involved in it. He wants to be above that. He just wants to get in there and defend his title. Right now, with the man in front of him, and Sosa from the Dominican Republic, as I said in my opening, Sosa better not act like Sammy Sosa, the, fav the famous Dominican Republic slugger, and look for home runs. He better act like Sammy Sosa, the guy who gets singles once in a while. And the singles would come in the form of that jab, putting punches together, and going to the body. You look for home runs against Paul Spatafora, you're going to have problems. You're going to do that a lot. You're going to be missing and leaving yourself open. Sosa has been knocked out once. It came in his seventh pro bout. Knocked out by Antonio Ramirez. Sosa has not been in against the stiffest of competition, Teddy. If you look at his last four bouts, in his last bout, he knocked out a guy who was 0-3. Right before that, a guy who was 6-0. Three fights ago, a guy in his pro debut, and a 500 fighter four fights ago. So a huge step up in class for Sosa. What I like so far from, so, from Sosa, Bob, is he's taking his time. He's not getting over anxious. A lot of guys are in there with an elusive guy, especially being out of his country. This is the first time, as we said, he's fighting out of his country, fighting for the world type title. They're all anxious. They go in there trying to get it all at once. He's taking his time. Closing the gap pretty nice, going to the body when he gets close. So far, I like what I see with Sosa. Well, Sosa had a very good amateur career. He represented the Dominican Republic in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. He didn't just go to the Olympics. He won his first two bouts, and then he was stopped in the third round of competition. Yeah, he's very patient in there. And you notice he has a good sense of range. But he's not doing nothing. He steps out before Spatafora can do anything. Hey, it looks like there's a lot of swelling along the right side of Spatafora's face. Well, he's been hit with a couple good left hands already. Sosa's doing a good job of closing the gap. He doesn't reach. Spatafora, he's making Spatafora reach. It's so, not a bad way to fight an elusive guy like Spatafora. Sosa said that he had beaten some southpaws in his career, and he spent a lot of time preparing for the southpaw. In fact, he started training for this fight before it was actually signed. He's got three months of preparation. He's very patient, and he's making Spatafora come to him. Make the boxer come to him. Round number one in the books. Paul Spatafora and Victoriano Sosa. Inside every car's engine, friction and wear cut scratches in metal surfaces, causing compression and power loss. Restore with CSL fills these scratches and improves the seal between piston rings and cylinder walls, thereby restoring engine power and reducing oil consumption. Independent tests prove that Restore really works to increase and balance compression across all cylinders. 
If you have an older car or truck with a lot of miles, improve the engine performance with Restore. Satisfaction guaranteed. The website is an extremely valuable asset to us here at ESPN. We utilize it every single day. Yeah, it looks like Gladwell Pitch Game 1. Yeah. We log on every morning, everybody in the department. We've checked them with batting average. Who's been traded? Who's been benched? When a producer calls us. Oh, my God, Rafter pulled out of the tournament. We have to change the spot. I'm working. St. John's is ranked number 23. The guys out there, they're always on it. <laughs> the website's crucial. ESPN.com. Go where the pros go. I don't see how we could get through a day without it. Round number two underway between Paul Spadafora and Victoriano Sosa. At stake, Spadafora's IBF lightweight championship. Pretty good first round for the challenger, Sosa. But I like what Sosa did, Bob, was you've got a guy, Spadafora, in front of you. It's a good box, a good counterpunch. A lot of guys that go chase him, and they walk right into the trap. Sosa's taking his time. He's making Spadafora come to him sometimes. And when he does come to him, he closes the gap by taking steps, not reaching. Look how he's making Spider Four coming to him. Looking to counter. Looking to counter the counter punch. Spider Four's last bout, he took on Renato Cornette of Australia. Cornette landed only 5% of his total punches, the lowest total percentage in a championship fight in copy box history. Four or more rounds. And Cornette was an unknown. 32 of his. 33 pro bouts have been in Australia. Now Sosa, all of his fights in the Dominican Republic. So Spadafora taking guys that it's hard to find out a lot about. Yes, it is. There was a little footage, some videotape, but hey, when you ask for the videotape on them, they're going to send you the videotape that they want to send you. The stuff that makes them look bad, so you accept the fight. Maybe they can trap you to take it. That's what Sosa people are hoping they did. They trapped Spadafora into taking a fight that maybe the guy's better than they thought he was. Teddy, you, know, you mentioned before going to the body would be important. Sosa's done a decent job of body work here on Spadafora. Yes, he has. And what I like is he uses his legs to close the gap. When Spadafora moves out, he steps with him. He doesn't reach. He steps and gets in the right distance before he punches. Doesn't leave himself open. And in spots, like I said, he's making Spatter 4 reach to him every once in a while. Like that. He just needs to throw something when he makes a miss. See, like I said, he's got a counterpunch in front of him. So, so what's he doing? He's making the counterpunch to come out of his fight a little bit. He's making Spatter 4 lead and take away his greatest quality, which is his elusiveness, his ability to make you walk into traps, make you lead, and set you up for counters. Sosa's trying to take that away from Spadafora. A little bit of a chess match there. Well thought out couple of rounds here for Sosa as he lands a couple of hooks. A nice work by Sosa. He's in good position when he throws. He's not reaching. Watch how he steps and gets the distance. Nice. Like that. Boy, he steps nice. And before he went to the body and then switched to the head nice. This isn't the jab, 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 pop, pop, pop spot of four we saw against Pito Cardona. He's not fighting the style of fight that he's most comfortable with. And there's the bell to end round number two as we take it to the corner of Paul Spadafora. And his trainer, Jesse Reed. Jesse was brought in prior to the August 20th title showdown against Pito Cardona. We asked Jesse about his relationship with Paul Spadafora. Fight from every angle. God gave him the reflexes of a mountain lion. He's given the heart of a mountain lion. Plus, he's got compassion and he's got kindness. And so it's a good combination. It's a balance. So when I look at Paul in the eyes and I tell him, son, I want you to go out there and enjoy yourself. He knows that I'm telling him the truth. Whenever he eats, I eat what he eats. Whenever he trains, I train at my level at my age, but I train with him. So we're a team. We're one person. It's not only myself, but Al McCauley, Frank. We all work as one. So they've developed a fast friendship, but they have to figure out what Sosa's doing, Teddy, because he's doing a pretty good job through two rounds. I think he's doing a very good job. I like what I see from Sosa. Spider Four is in a fight. And Spider Four is not a big banger. Now we know that Sosa's been stopped once. So when there's a little question mark about his... Shit. 
But Spadafore better not get into the kind of fight where he has to depend on a knockout or a knockout. Because he's not that kind of banger. Sosa landed 36% of his punches in that second round, and you see 22 of 61 in that round, and uh, 21 of them were power shots. You know, another quick work for Sosa. He's confident with Southpaws. He's beaten two Southpaws in his career. 98, he won a 12-round decision over Hilario Guzman, and also in 99, Rafael Moran. He beat the 12-round decision. Two Southpaws, so he knows he can handle that. That lefty style. That's important. You leave, Paul. You leave. Little chess match again going on here. Neither guy wanna, wants to leave themselves open. They both know they have tricky guys in front of each other. You saw Rafael Moran beat undefeated David Santos here on ESPN2 back in November of 96. a caution for a low shot that was right on the belt. He held Sosa close to the gap when he throws those... Oh! Pato Spadafore is down and he is hurt! Yeah, that's Sosa close to the gap. Nice! The champion is down! And he can't get up! Big upset here. Boy, that was on the top of the head on the... Up over around the temple. And that throws your legs off, Bob. Raph's gonna let it go on. Sosa moving in for the kill. We have a huge upset making. Can Sosa pull it off? And look how Sosa, how calm he is. He just zeroes in. Look how he gets his space. He gets right in there. Boy, he steps in any punches. IBF lightweight champion Paul Spadafora is in deep trouble here in round three. The only thing that I don't see Spadafora doing enough of right now, I mean Sosa, is he should be going to the body a little bit more. Another right hand to the head. Good right hand by Sosa. In between those head punches. Oh, he's got his legs out again. Spadafora wobbling. They're ruling that a knockdown. No three knockdown rule. And remember, cannot be saved by the bell in any round. When you get hit on the temple area, like Sosa's been hitting Spadafora, your legs go. And Spadafora's legs are real spaghetti now. And there's the bell to end round three. Spadafora, the champion, knocked down twice. Let's take you to the corner. In his face, get the ice on him. Paul, get your head together. You ran right into a punch. He's throwing the right hand spin your back leg. Are you all right? Yeah. All right. Paul, look at me. Get yourself together now. Get that head whip in and move in there. Don't worry about it. Get yourself together. Here, give me a little water. Come on, wake up. All right, here we go. Danny, let's take a look at the oh. first knockdown, and you Don't mentioned it to the right top of the head. Bad spot to get, get hit. First, you're going to see a right hand, I think, and then a left hook. And that's the benefit of throwing more than one punch, finishing with the hook. There's a the right hand. There's a the right hand back with the hook. And right there, that one was behind the ear, that left hook. Came back with the left hook after missing the right hand. And the follow-up punch is the one that...